Hi, as you can see, I have a TP-Link 1 mesh network here consisting of an Archer A7 wireless router and an RE220 repeater. And in this video, we're gonna put it to the test. Basically, we're gonna continue where we were left off in the previous video where we set up our One Mesh network. So if you haven't watched the previous video and interested to know what One Mesh is, how it works and how it can be configured, definitely watch that video first. In this video though, we're gonna first see how stable our One Mesh network and One Mesh node is, and then we're gonna do a couple of speed tests and compare our results with when this is not in One Mesh and is simply a repeater. Finally, we're gonna check out the roaming experience in this network and see if we can really experience seamless roaming. So let's begin. In the last two weeks that I've been using this One Mesh network, I tried different things to see if this node ever loses its connection to the wireless router and goes offline. Let me show you what I did. First of all, I powered off this node, powered it on again, after a minute or so it came back online. Then I powered off the wireless router, powered it on again, this came back online with no problem. This time I powered off both of them at the same time, powered them on again, and they came back online. So far the One Mesh network did actually great. It showed me if I experienced some sort of a power cut, as soon as the power is back, it can automatically come back online without my help, which is good. Next, I actually got a little bit more creative. This time I powered off the node, then changed the 2.4 GHz wireless network name and password on the router, powered on the node again, it came back online and started broadcasting the old 5 GHz and the new 2.4 GHz wireless networks. And finally I powered off the node, changed the names and passwords of both of the wireless networks on the router, powered on the node again, and to my surprise it came back online and started broadcasting the new wireless networks. For the speed test, as always, I used iPerf. For those who might not be familiar with iPerf, I actually have a whole video talking about it, and I'll put the link to that video in the video description in case you want to check it out. Basically, there are two computers in my iPerf speed test. One connected to the wireless router with an Ethernet cable, and the other one wirelessly connected to the node. One mesh is actually in control of which frequency band should be used for the backhaul. I'm, however, in control of which frequency band this computer should connect to. First, I connected the computer to the 2.4 GHz network and I got maximum 48 megabits per second. Then I switched to the 5 GHz network and I got maximum 74 megabits per second. Next, I enabled the Smart Connect feature on the wireless router. You might remember that we already talked about this feature before in another video when we actually did the basic setup for this wireless router. Basically, when I enable it, it's gonna use the same name and password for the 2.4 GHz and 5 GHz networks. Now, with this setup, I'm no longer in control of which frequency band this computer is going to use to connect to this node, and it is up to the computer to decide. So, with this setup, I actually was able to get maximum 50 megabits per second. Finally, I removed this node from the One Mesh network and used it as a repeater, but with high speed option enabled. So basically 2.4 GHz for the backhaul and 5 GHz for the clients. And I got maximum 105 megabits per second. For the roaming test, I actually took a laptop, walked back and forth between the router and the node with it and observed its roaming behavior. First of all, I used this command in the Windows command prompt to see the MAC address of the wireless device that the laptop was connected to. For example, if I run the command and it shows me this MAC address, it is telling me that the laptop is connected to this device. And if it shows me that MAC address, it means that it is connected to that device. I also ran a continuous ping to 1.1.1.1 to check the internet connection during the roaming process, whether it is going down or not. And finally I played the music file on my laptop, 
not to entertain myself, but rather to simulate a VoIP call and see what happens to it during the roaming process. Basically, I started a Skype call to my cell phone, which was not connected to the Wi-Fi and was using its own 4G network. The cell phone was receiving the music through the Skype call and was recording it as well as I was walking back and forth between these two devices. VoIP and video calls are actually very sensitive internet services, so it would be interesting to see what happens to my Skype call as I walk back and forth. First, I tried the 5 GHz network and connected to that. So as I got close to either of those devices, it would easily and seamlessly connect to that device, which was good. And this process had little impact on the pings and on the VoIP call, which again was good. However, when I tried the 2.4 GHz network, it was a different story. The laptop would stay connected to the router even when I was close to this node. I was actually able to fix this by changing the transmit power from high to medium, but only for the 2.4 GHz band. Because normally the 2.4 GHz has a higher range than 5 GHz, and making this change made them more or less equal. This time I enabled the Smart Connect option, and as we talked about it before, with this enabled, now it is up to the laptop to decide which network and which frequency band it should connect to, because they both have the same names and passwords. With this setup, I again had the same problem I had with the 2.4 GHz network. It would not disconnect from the wireless router, even when I was close to this node. Unfortunately though, now if I reduce the power to medium, it would do that for both radios, which is something that I don't want to do. But for testing purposes, I gave it a try, and still the experience was nowhere close to seamless roaming. So even though the Smart Connect feature is supposed to enhance the roaming, it didn't do that for me, and for some reason it made it even worse. Alright, so let's see what we did in this video. First of all, I tried different things to see if for whatever reason the One Mesh node goes offline, would it be able to come back online and connect to the One Mesh network again? And it turned out as long as it was powered on and within the wireless range of the wireless router, it could easily connect and join the One Mesh network again. Then I did a few speed tests to realize that the One Mesh network is not necessarily going to improve the speed. And in my case, as a repeater, I was actually able to reach much faster speeds. 
And finally, I tested the roaming and with a little bit of change in the transmit power, I was actually able to experience seamless roaming. But unfortunately, not when I enabled the smart connect feature. So overall, in my opinion, I think OneMesh is good for the people who want to easily add one or more repeaters to their TP-Link wireless router and broadcast the same networks everywhere. But if somebody wants to have more control over the repeater and the focus is maybe more on the speed rather than simplicity, then the repeater with high speed feature might be a better option. Alright, that was pretty much it and I hope you liked it. Please give it a thumbs up if you did, share it if you think others might like it too, and subscribe to my channel if you want to see more videos like this. Thank you again and I will see you next time.